Dr. Pasquini. I am uh, the scientific coordinator of uh, NewsPack, which was uh, one of the projects uh, under the uh, same group as PinoSpec. So it's a kind of uh, private project. Um, and the title uh, uh, of our project was uh, New Cost Effective and Sustainable Polyethylene Based uh, Carbon Fibers for volume market applications. Uh, but the keyword here is uh, polyethylene. So uh, I think that uh, the previous talks uh, have given to you uh, a clear idea of what the uh, ambition of the call, so developing the carbon fibers starting from nuclear castles. Uh, and Professor Reichen uh, gave uh, also an idea of the market and why we need to have uh, these uh, new fibers or new precursors uh, to reduce costs uh, for uh, the market for new uh, kind of applications. Uh, so not only uh, transport, but also other uh, mass market uh, uh, apps, which are, for example, uh, uh, the energy field, the industrial field, the electronics, uh, uh, wind energy, energy storage, uh, uh, pressure vessels, uh, pipes. Uh, so there is, a, let's say, there are plenty of applications that require uh, new fibers. Uh, and in our project, we decided to focus on a very specific precursor, which is polyethylene. Uh, that has some features which uh, are very interesting, like the high carbon yield, 70% compared to EAN, which is around 40. The high processability at this precursor stage, flexibility, a very competitive cost of the precursor, which is less than the half uh, of the polyethylene trial. Um, there are many alternatives to, to, to be selected. Um, so the advantages to select this, this precursor were many in confront of, for example, cellulose, LinkedIn, and so on. Um, but we had many challenges, problems to, to be solved. For example, uh, to improve the toughness, the ductility of the plants of PE, to obtain very fine fibers uh, using the uh, wet spinning process because wet spinning uh, uses uh, a very high molecular weight polyethylene uh, uh, <coughs> that uh, it is not suitable <coughs> to, to form, to produce carbon fibers. And this is something that uh, we have experienced uh, using, for example, uh, Dynema fibers in our project. So, um, then set up a completely new stabilization process. Uh, which was not limited by diffusion and allowed, for example, uh, uh, to reduce the process time and also the process cost compared to the traditional old-fashioned uh, style uh, approach dating back to the 70s. Another challenge was to improve the crystallinity, the orientation and the strength of the polymer chains uh, in order to be able to convert it into a crystalline carbon structure. Uh, I will explain to you uh, how many problems we <laughs> faced and uh, how many, I mean, we were able to fix a lot of, a lot of issues. Um, and at the end, uh, we hope to uh, solve the, the recursive issue and today we have a recursive that might work. Then uh, we also have uh, uh, Let's say around this core idea, uh, several other uh, innovations, like for example, uh, using nano additives to reduce the carbonization and the decision temperature, which uh, should uh, reduce the cost of the process, to uh, implement in line some non destructive characterization techniques, like uh, ground control, like using the innovative surface treatments, like plasma, to improve the addition of the metrics and functionalize the fibers as we want and so on. So uh, the target properties of our bead fibers are uh, basically summarized here. So it's 
clear that the fiber is got uh, on any other parameters, but in summary, so the tensile module and the tensile strand. So compared to the uh, high performance structural carbon fibers uh, used today in the avionic sector, for example, we are in this area. So not uh, the ambition was not to make fibers for the uh, aerospace. That's clear, but for different applications, uh, where the mechanical requirements were uh, lower. Um, the team was made of uh, a number of research centers. In this room, there are uh, uh, partners like the ITF in Germany. There is uh, Nick from uh, Vito, Belgium. There is uh, Anna from uh, Exeter. Uh, there is also a representative from uh, a small enterprise, uh, which was part of this project, Petroceramics. Uh, we have also big companies like Lamborghini, Absolute Car, Rainbow, uh, YSDO, the US United State Design Office from Ukraine. So, a team from Europe that work, in my opinion, we work together to realize the objectives of this, uh, uh, of this project. Uh, we need a radically new process, and this was implemented at the ITCF, where they have a, a center, which is called the High Performance Fiber Center, so a pilot line partially funded by the regional government, so once we're at UAS, sometimes it's possible <laughs> that Germany puts a part of money and then Europe uh, puts the rest. Uh, and this was inaugurated just at the beginning of our project. Uh, and they, for example, have uh, the uh, carbonization line, the mass spinning line, which were already there. And then we had some equipment made on new spec to let's say, integrate the line. The process uh, is made uh, of different steps. So we have a metal spinner, uh, spinning and fibers. Uh, uh, we use uh, uh, an electron beam curing equipment to cross the fibers and then we develop a stabilization uh, uh, machine. For the carbonization, uh, we use the facility available at the ITCF and then the surface treatment is done, for example, uh, offline at Vito, in part, and in line at the ITCF. So concerning the, the first part of the process, what we achieved in the project uh, was, uh, for example, a um, pilot scale, um, let's say, uh, the pilot scale uh, um, uh, part of the equipment uh, based on a clean screen extruder for uh, um, uh, continuous bio-based HTP uh, um, fibers. We were able to spin the dish machine uh, up to 250 filaments, uh, uh, which there are winded in uh, up to 12 case pools, um, so 12 k tools. Uh, the capacity is very high, 8 kilogram per hour, which means more or less 4 kilometers per hour of fibers. Um, which have a diameter uh, of less than 15, 10 microns. <coughs> so, okay, you see some pictures of the, I don't know exactly Eric, how many kilometers <laughs> of the European Union, but uh, I think that this is just a picture of some of the, <laughs> of the schools. Uh, and I think that uh, the man, more than 90%, maybe 95% trials unfortunately failed. Careful with the microphone. <laughs> then, um, okay, this, uh, so at medium term, uh, we were able to prove the concept that this fiber, let's say, was possible to realize or to produce oleated in carbon fibers. Uh, we produced some, I mean, uh, small samples short single filaments uh, uh, processed in a tubular furnace, so very small uh, uh, 
a scale of and stabilized using the conventional method um, of sulfonation, uh, the carbonization parameters were I mean, have been optimized but in the lab. And, but these results uh, were a poor concept, so this allowed to tell us, okay, it is possible to make uh, a carbon fiber out of polyethylene with the mechanical performance which are in line with the targets. So then uh, the fact it was that we didn't want to use uh, the old fashioned uh, stabilization method which uh, was patented in 1978, uh, was based on volume uh, for fireside, uh, and today it is used by Oak Ridge and Dow Chemical uh, to make the same, uh, I mean, they try to make the same fibers. The point is that technically is working, it is partially, but still uh, after 10 years, uh, nobody has seen yet uh, the Oak Ridge fibers uh, in the market, uh, but it's very expensive uh, and also uh, it rises with severe uh, uh, security and safety issues. We propose a totally new method uh, which has been patented uh, in 2016 uh, by the, the ITF. Uh, so then we had to try this method was working uh, here you see some oil chemistry and uh, basically the idea is to add sulfur, uh, elemental sulfur in the depot phase uh, to stabilize the fibers not uh, using wet chemistry but gas phase uh, sulfur, activating and transforming the polyethylene chain into a system which is very similar to the PAM uh, crystalline structure. This is the cancer besides the process. The point is that before adding sulfur and stabilizing the fiber, we have to make the polyethylene uh, enough robust. <coughs> so we have to increase the melting point of our system uh, above 200 degrees C. Otherwise, the polyethylene melting point is 140 degrees C and the fibers melt and you get nothing. To do this, the idea was to cross-link, to create cross-linking of uh, chains, the polymer chains, uh, using uh, an EBC machine. Uh, this was also pretty original. We could do that in continuous, which uh, has never been far, I mean, has never done so far, say, <laughs> by anyone else. Um, and uh, then, uh, I mean, in collaboration with the uh, Venus, a German company who developed other parts of the line, we developed a new pilot equipment which consists of these two ovens to stabilize the fibers uh, in a continuous and these fibers in a continuous process, which allow to stabilize fibers uh, up to 12 uh, tow. And uh, this was certified by TV, and we spent a mass of time, almost I don't know, six months, maybe one year, to get this certification and we are allowed to operate. But then now we can operate it, and it's uh, almost operational. So this means we made several trials. Up to now, not all of them were very successful. We hope that by the end of this year, the oven will be fully operating. Uh, we have to build, uh, I mean, a big, uh, let's say, system to treat the exhausts, because uh, the exhaust of uh, from this oven is uh, H2S, and uh, of course, uh, we have to uh, treat it by catalytic reaction. So this was another part of the equipment built during the project. Um, and then in parallel to this, for example, Exeter and Technaro work also on the use of nano additives. Uh, uh, so it was developed, for example, a method for uh, uh, mixing the um, 
servers are crystals uh, in the matrix in order to improve the, 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 uh, the fibers. Mm. And for example, preventing uh, steering effects, so which were detrimental. Uh, this method was successful. And acceptors also develop a, a, a kind of imaging method so to quantify the degree of dispersion of these uh, cellulosan crystals uh, within uh, the polymer matrix. Uh, and this is based on a kind of Raman imaging. Uh, so, which allows to uh, statistically uh, analyze the distribution of nanoparticles <coughs> and to check if they are well dispersed in the matrix. This is part of <coughs> uh, Unfortunately, I have to say that uh, we did, I mean, we stopped this, this work now because. Uh, Nano uh, agents uh, is uh, in, uh, <coughs> it was not totally successful. Uh, let me say that uh, the most difficult job is to disperse the particles inside the polymer in the, in the proper way. Otherwise, uh, you only add defects instead of adding uh, uh, functionality. So that's uh, our conclusion. Then uh, Vito has developed, uh, uh, in parallel to, to, to work, uh, a system for the continuous plasma treatment of uh, endless fibers uh, uh, dedicated uh, to, to our fibers. At the beginning, uh, uh, they worked with the uh, array, which was very interested in this, and I think it's uh, still interested in, uh, in the results. This has been patented uh, in Europe and in the uh, United States. Uh, uh, and allows to treat a continuous stream of uh, fibers. Uh, so this, uh, this plasma equipment has been used to treat uh, recently some, some spools provided by his uh, state design office uh, with uh, a very big improvement in the properties of, uh, of the fibers uh, when they are in, in a thermoplastic so uh, yesterday it was, uh, there was a discussion about the possibility to, to apply for a new patent, to find out a new patent on this. Um, and finally, the online real-time uh, non-destructive testing equipment uh, developed uh, by Ford in like, collaboration with uh, Randy Show. These are uh, many features uh, which allow, for example, to probe uh, in line uh, the mechanical uh, uh, characteristics of the fibers. Uh, it is uh, controlled by the wound. Uh, the capabilities are, for example, to check the degree of crystallinity, the level of colonization, stiffness, uh, and so on. This is uh, now operating. We tested using plant fibers uh, because we still do not have our polyethylene fibers, at least endless fibers. Uh, Recently, what we are, let's say, able to obtain uh, are carbon fibers made out of polyethylene. Uh, the carbon yield measured is uh, 40 percent. Uh, the mechanical properties uh, are in line with the targets that we were expecting at the beginning. Maybe the size strength is a little bit lower than, than expected. With uh, a certain residual sulfur content which could be improved or so uh, optimized. Um, and uh, we are going to uh, try now to process before the end of uh, the year, before Christmas, uh, uh, one K carbon fiber uh, um, spool, which should be the proof of concept for further upscale of this new pilot process. So, uh, as a conclusion, I would say that uh, uh, in this project, which was, uh, let's say, a research project, uh, maybe an applied research project, we uh, have uh, demonstrated that it is possible to make uh, carbon fibers out of polyethylene 
although the process is much more complex uh, than uh, uh, the one that we have seen, I mean, we were expecting at the beginning. And uh, probably this will really bear the cost at the end of, of the material. But uh, in terms of uh, uh, the demonstration of proof of concept, uh, we are uh, say, very happy because this is the first time so far that uh, someone in the world is able to produce a creative in carbon fiber using a radical new stabilization uh, uh, method, so, which could be more, much more promising than, than the classical one. So we thank the Commission for funding, uh, and uh, so if you have any questions, thank you.